Hello, and welcome to the recap. Uh, because we're still, even though I'm streaming this, I still need to put a video up later. <laughs> I'm Kiss Blue! And today, it's just me, Gengar. No nose dice. Mm -hmm. He's probably really busy lately. Yeah, hey. I think he has finals is the thing, right? Mm. Yeah, true. It's like the mm -hmm. end of the... Yeah, okay. But yeah. Makes sense. He was only available at, like, way too late for both of us, so... Yep. Hopefully he'll be back next week. Uh, in any case, uh, let's go right into the recaps. We're back onto normal recaps this week. So, uh, that is this... Oh, hey. That's interesting. But no, we want week eight. Uh, the first game is Large Skulls vs. Cowboy Dwarfs, which is a, cons a uh, admin game. Yes. Uh, some good MVPs, though. Heroes of the Salt Coast versus Lich's Skull Crush is our first real game mm -hmm. where Heroes of the Salt Coast actually got a beating from the Lich's Skill Crushes and actually got a death. Uh, yeah. You remember last week when we looked at their Thick Skull Thrall? Yes. Well, it's a dead Thrall now. <laughs> the Skull wasn't thick enough. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> Uh, I do see a few leveled Chaos Dwarfs. Might be interesting to look at that later. What's the next match? Uh, well, the... Actually, I just wanted to point out also, uh, wow, there's actually hardly any blocks in this game. 13 yeah, 20, to 29. I... They have been dodging a lot. Wow. Uh, right. But yeah, that was a fairly uneventful game. Just Chaos Wars killing it. Uh, so we can move right on from it. The next one is Valorous Paladins versus You Worship Chaos. You Worship Chaos, which is also an admin game. And then Really yes. Famous Medics versus Rottingham Rodders, where... This is a real one. Uh, well, except not really. It is also an admin win because, as I understand it, Can't Table Me Here was unavailable. Hmm. Uh, I'm not sure exactly he was, uh, what he was actually doing. He actually uh, also sent a message in um, uh, I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I I'm not sure exactly what's going on. I just know that he was unavailable for this week. Okay, our second real game then is Gobbles Gobbles vs. Hufflepuff Heroes. Oh, and this this is a good game. Goblins wow. win two to zero. <laughs> Well, you know, I am still rooting for Camry, but this is a big deal. Three deaths? The uh, hell? Yeah, not just any deaths either. It's the throw raw, as we can see here, and two dead tomb guardians. Six expulsions as well. This uh, goblin team just went wow. on a rampage. And also, the third a third tomb guardian was niggled. So, I guess that's Hufflepuff of heroes lost Ripper. like literally all of their tomb guardians in this game. Yeah, and I think that strategy of going for, like, Ripper is really paying off. Uh, yeah, it is. Uh, he also induced... Right the he also induced, uh, Fungus for this match, meaning he had four Seer weapons, so he fouled... He had at least two regular goblins sent off from fouling. Um... Let's see what's left from our full buff heroes. So, yeah... That's two dead Tomb Guardians, and his mm. team has completely Tomb Guardian focus, so basically yeah. nothing anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, and last of all, the goblins got a plus movement on the on a level up on a goblin. Yay, throw teammate. Yep, that's that's the ball carrier now. <laughs> Next up is a very elfy game. Uh, Pantheon it's Passers versus the High Fivers. Necromantic versus Elves. This is going to be a speed versus throw game. Mm -hmm. T self wins three to two. Uh, good MVP on that flush goal one. Uh, two deaths for the Pantheon passes, by the way. Yep. Uh, one deaths. is a catcher and the other is a line elf. And a, a second really catcher weak. got niggled as well. This has been really mm -hmm. a deadly week. The niggled one is the edgy up one, so that's huge. On the other hand, uh, the high fivers rolled a level up on both of their on both of their werewolves, and both of them rolled doubles. So one of them is a claw palmer now, and the other one took mighty blow. 
and because, she uh, up on but yeah. so he can get everywhere and he can kill you. This is wow. That, I like that because it's a werewolf. So you know, of course, of course, my claw palm werewolf every time. Even though the rest of his team is not really developed, those two werewolves are just going to carry the team. If if Rumblebee has taught me anything, the rest of your team doesn't matter if you have great werewolves. Yep. Well, basically, Hate My Hair is a great example for that. Uh, yeah, Horny Cricket seems actually... Well, Horny Cricket has like a couple good players, but mostly it's his werewolves, yeah. Yeah. Then the last game we have is Organized Crime versus your Lizard Ari. Uh, which is a 1-2 win for the Lizards. Spikasaur is still with his, like, Ogre Squad without a single Noblar on the team. <laughs> mm-hmm. And, uh, unfortunately, there... Or maybe fortunately for, uh, Sakari, this was a fairly un standard and somewhat uneventful game. No one really... No one got murdered. There were no permanent injuries other than possibly on some Snotlings, and I don't count those. <laughs> yes, one miss next game, so that's, that's it. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's but a Croxigore again is fireable though, mm -hmm. and it's a w yeah. win for Sakari, and it's probably really what he needed, really what he wanted—a a solid win here, not dropping it against the Ogres. Yeah, his team has had a beating, but he's still holding mm -hmm. strong. Okay, what's up on uh, the teams? What are we going to look at? What are you doing? Uh, well, this is a rare case where I haven't picked a solid. I don't actually have a good choice right now, because like normally I would go through all the stunties, but I want to give them an extra week or two so that I can see them when they're more developed. <laughs> Take the leader of our uh, group, then I'm going to look at the Cowboy Dwarves again. That sounds like a good choice. See how far they are doing and why they are leading. The first thing uh, which I'm noticing is lots of dodge on the wrong players. Uh, yeah... He was the guy who was having the dodge uh, blotch beards. I mean, it is annoying early on, but later on it's going to hurt mm -hmm. you more. And I think tackle would be better, but for now it's pretty really good. Uh, I think the newest addition to his team, you may correct me if I'm wrong, is it the Death Roller? Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that Death Roller is new. And he does have a... He does have a referee rest area as well. So I, I don't remember him having this before, so I'm pretty sure what he did is... Right up, he just had a bye week last week, right? So I think he had enough money to get both of those exactly, and that's what he did. Death Roller, by the way, is like new, new, hasn't played a single match yet. Uh, yeah. So, uh, that's why his te team value is so high. Uh, but I'm actually curious to see how he'll do in his next couple games, because he's been doing really well so far, and the Death Roller could make him win more, but it could also make him just crash like i've definitely had uh, leagues before where i'm doing really well then i buy a big guy and i just do terrible for the rest of the season interesting here is how um, clint eastwood is having a, a movement up which is really good for the draw slayer with his frenzy it's better after you have i'd say one more level up than this like I think movement is ideally you don't want to take it until you're third level up or later. Yeah, but that's the thing. Look at uh, the SPP. That's not so long anymore. Yeah, that, it right. that's true. And I mean, like, the really important thing is you can't take it on your first level up because you need, you need Mighty Blow. Yeah. That's true. But, you know, mm -hmm. in this situation, I actually really like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like it as well. Um, he has five guard, which is pretty good. He has the one, his one runner is a sacker. Actually, no, he has two runners, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. They're just in weird places. Um, block Fend on the other one. I wonder how many scores does this runner have? Uh, touchdowns. Nine. So he's scoring almost exclusively on this one runner. I'm surprised he hasn't leveled up more then. Hmm. Oh well. I am actually looking now for a second team to look at, but you should be the one choosing yeah, it. Yeah, I so probably should. Uh, I am going to go with uh, Heroes of the Sword Coast. Oof. 
King of the Cosmos having a very bad season. Yep, they they they've had a rough season. But he's up with his five vampires and his army of thralls, so that's a good thing. Has his Fiora Reels and a Mot a Potakeri. And has a thrower, which is actually pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. Which is less interesting is the fact that none of his vampires actually are leveled up yet. Like, there are loads of mm -hmm. vampires yeah. who literally do a pass for leveling up and, like, you know, mm -hmm. edgy 4 to edgy 4 pass normally should not be a big deal. Yeah, it's clear that only his two of his vampires have scored a touchdown. If that, has this guy even scored? Uh, yeah. Two of them, only two of them have clearly scored touchdowns, and none of them even have block. So it's easy to see how he's been having a rough season, even without his all the attrition he's been taking. I am curious if we'll see this theme mm. around next season. To be fair, I I think like, I I would like to see like, it next season because I think uh, a half bit or mm. like a like trimming and like restructuring of mm -hmm. the team might be order here to say that like I'd fire uh, Dina here. Mm -hmm. I'd fire Xar, I'd fire Xan, I'd just hire a few more trolls, mm -hmm. I'd try to level up those um, people who are 560p, and I'd focus on like skills which will make sure that they level up faster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, and, and that's actually the thing here, like he's been having a lot of trouble leveling up, but I think what he ha is doing with his development is actually very interesting. Like, I want to see where he goes from here, but I'm not sure he'll stick it with this team for a second season? It depends, it really depends. Because, like, he like... he has a vampire, he has a throwing vampire, which is just really weird and interesting. He has the, what's it's looking like it's really going to be a murder good. vampire. And... Like, in a developed team, a throwing mm -hmm. vampire is actually really useful, yeah. but... Yeah. And having a throwing vampire implies he's going to turn another vampire into a receiver. Like, there's a lot of interesting things that could happen here. Also, he has a mighty blow. Of... Is he just taking, like, a random... He... Like, one of the things he also could get in one of those vampires is actually pro. Uh, pro is good on vampires, but I think you usually want block first. Yeah, I actually will be able to tell you how good pro is in, like, a few weeks, because I'm doing on the One Minute League a vampire <laughs> team with pro as first level up. Well, so I got three pro vampires mm -hmm. already, and two of them are about to level up, which will also get pro. And that's no rerolls, right? <laughs> yeah. Sure. Only pro. See what it does. <laughs> sure, that could that could be interesting. Uh, but uh, l last thing to note here, uh, he has. I don't think he has yet to roll a normal on his thrall level ups, but he's taking like a different skill each time. He has the one guard guy, but he's also taking mighty blow on one. He also had the thick all skull one who died last week. It's like, it's great level up luck, but it's also kind of weird. <laughs> like, yeah. Mighty Blow Thrall. This I'm just curious to see what will go with this team, because I actually don't really have much words for it otherwise. Uh -huh. It's sad, sad story, basically. Yeah. Because these dwarves were awesome, so that's why I'm like, mm, I would have liked King to be, you know, back on top again. Mm hmm. Well, anyway, let's taking go a breather to season the can be nine. the right thing to do sometimes as well. Uh, yeah, so yeah. the two admin teams are playing against one another. Uh, the Paladins won. Take yeah. that large spell. Ha ha! Take that, ogres. Um. <laughs> Okay, the match which I want to see is those birders from Gobo Gobos versus Cowboy Dwarfs. Uh, I was going to say that one. No, now I need to think of a new one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, the Gobo Gobos have actually been on a tear, but dwarves hard counter goblins. And also that death They roller, are a heavy, heavy um, hard counter because they have mm -hmm. block and they have tackle. So goblins, they come super squishy. Yep. The only thing you can do it is just go like mass chainsaw and rip it and just like, you know, try mm -hmm. to get those dwarves into pieces and score as fast as you can so you can get the dead roller off the field. Yeah, and actually it's going to be a home game for the dwarves, so they're going to have a bribe. Uh, oh gosh, it's going to be tough. That new death roller is 
probably going to do some work in this game because it's really good for dealing with trolls and it's really good for dealing with the fanatic. Well, you say that, and yes, it's going to be really good for the trolls and fanatic, I give you that. But when it comes down to just hunting goblins, good old longbeards are your best choice. Uh, you're, you're not wrong, but... I mean, there's three. There's going to be three strength seven players. No, strength five plus players on the goblin t side. The death roller no, deals with all going of them, to be, right? There's going to be a five, a six, and a strength seven player. Yep. And the death roller handles all of them. Yep. Well, what's the old uh, game then? Sorry that I just nicked yours. Uh, well... Since that happened, I'm going to say Lich's Skullcrushers versus Pantheon Passers. Um, I th this could be really painful because the Pantheon Passers are actually recovering from last mm -hmm. match. And if you look at Lich's Skullcrushers, they own six Mighty Blows, four of them with Tackle, all of them with Block. Yeah. So this team is made to bash in heads. Mm -hmm. Not to win games, but to bash in heads. Yep. And now he's going to face Pantheon Passers. I predict a self is a good mm -hmm. coach, but this is going to hurt. I predict a pure victory for the Pathers or the Passers on this one. Like I think the Elves will win it, but I think they will get murdered doing it. He has one good advantage in the fact that his blitzes are blotch and fence. Mm -hmm. So, you know, those are going to be super annoying and the ones are not going to be able to do too much about it. Mm -hmm. Big danger it is it's like his catches. His catches are not developed yet mm -hmm. and they're in danger. But uh, whoever loses that game, they're they're they'll probably drop out of play playoff contention because both of them are on the cusp of in it or not right now. It's pretty much going to be a decider here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're pretty right about that. Okay, five C. Like Mackie's division. Uh, yep. Let's see. Oh, 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 oh. This uh, is interesting. Uh, well, you, you, you've you clearly seen something interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh... Okay, let, let's start with the weekly backup and we'll be mm -hmm. able to see it. Uh, well, the first game is Frozen Dead North versus Say Hello to My Little Friends. Uh, which is, uh... My notes say... No, yes, 2-0. I, th I was reading my notes wrong. <laughs> Gobbo's this time not murdering everything, still having more armor breaks and expulsions, but not them being able to win the ball game versus werewolves. Uh, yeah. I mean, having werewolves in the field is like very useful, you know, they're super fast, they can score real quickly, mm -hmm. and off good secret weapons. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were a lot of KOs on this, in this game on both sides, which I think would tend to favor the werewolves. <laughs> Next match, Pro the Party versus the Merry Bot. Wait. Uh, still this gone. is an admin game. Yeah, they're still going huh. the Merry Bellows. Uh, then we have. Oh god. Well, <laughs> e easy, easy way for Pro the Party to stay. Mutations. Easy way for Pro and the Party to stay on the top of the leaderboard, I guess. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Can ta let, me, let me try this. <laughs> Can tech. Kiris Cretaceans for Strike All Stars. Next. 2 0 win for the Lizards. So, Lizards beat Ogres in this division as well. Um, Two deaths for the Ogres. Yeah, Ouch. one of those was the block pylon Ogre who had the niggle. Uh, so, I. Really? Uh, yes. So, my assumption is that he got fouled. But. Uh... Wait, it wasn't a block piling on, it was a normal pile, uh, like Mighty Blow piling on Ogre, No, I think. It, it took piling on, then it leveled up, and it got doubles and took block. God bloody hell, Ravenbode, stop rolling doubles. But, the silver lining is that one of Ravenbode's other Ogres leveled up this game, and rolled doubles and took block. <laughs> the same... So he lost his block ogre, but he got a new one. His song also changed a little bit. Right now it's Hey Now, get your game on, go play. Hey Now, you're a rock star, get the show on, get paid, and stop there. <laughs> well, 
he has lost a couple knoblars. <laughs> yep. No one else does with Shrek all stars. Mm -hmm. And he, he did get some decent SVP in this game, just, you know, he didn't win. Uh, yeah, 13 is not, not bad for Ogres. Talk, I'm not going to talk about Brona Party and um, Corn's Glory anymore. They didn't level up yet. Hmm. Well, Corn's Glory versus Iron Forge is the next game we're looking at. It's a 1 1 draw. Uh, let's look at Iron Forge then. Let's see. Iron Forge did 13 armor breaks. They had. 56 mm -hmm. blocks, 43% uh, ball possession, and let's look at their team, yeah. because this other team doesn't level. This this game was such a huge bash fest. Um, yeah, but the dwarves usually uh, you know, have the upper hand here, because but it, even mm -hmm. though Korn's Glory have all those mighty blown claw, dwarves have mass mm -hmm. block guard that just wins. The thing is, it was a bash fest, but it was a pillow-fisted bash fest. Only one injury, and it was not nothing serious. And yeah, there's a whole lot of scrumming in the middle of the field, probably, with uh, not a not a lot to show for it afterwards. Mesh, uh, mass mighty blow does not do a lot for the dwarves because it just lowers their AV9 to AV8 with Dixco, which is still a very good defensive lineup. I don't, I don't know, like. Most of my dwarves that I most of the dwarves that I've lost have been against mass mighty blow. To be honest, yours are made of like paper. You're just an exception. Like the only claw players that who have seriously hurt me have been werewolves, but it's the mass mighty blow teams that have done other injuries to me. Any, anyway, anyway, Iron Forge versus Cold's Glory. Now we are going to look at one of my favorite teams, Jazz Poison. Yeah. This is Grungy Desserts. Grungy Desserts 1, 1 to 0. Um. Oh, Mercury Davis, the Underworld Goblin, is Miss Nick's game. Mm hmm. Jazz Poison. And one of his. One of his Caven linemen has dodged now. Uh, yeah, that was from this game. Also, I think he lost his both his Caven throwers. This is why his TV is down. Uh, he didn't lose them this game, though. He must have lost them, like, a couple of weeks ago. I don't recall exactly when. But, uh, he did kill a player in this game. I think it was just a rotter, though. About time he's, like, Skaven blitzes and warp stone trolls level so he can get a mighty blow piling on. Mm -hmm. And a claw blitzer stuff going. About time to become the real underworld. Team. Uh, you know what though? This is a uh, this is Stadokis's team, so he had a rough start. Any win he takes at this point is great for him. He's probably not in playoff contention, but he can definitely kick other people out of it. Plus, you know, it's good for his development. Yeah, I don't know. After so many games, I'd be tired of these guys already. <laughs> but with Nurgle, it's basically a case of dig around. I mean, I think with Nurgle, you sort of like. I feel like you sort of almost have to stay after after the first season because it's just such a slow t developing uh, team. You don't really hit your stride in the first season, no matter what you do, unless you are um, unless lucky. You no, unless you're that one Nurgle team from 5B. Uh, Rodding <laughs> Rottingham ro Rockers. <laughs> unless you're to Spirit sure, Crusher. I, told, <laughs> I actually also had a really good like Nurgle start when I was playing Nurgle in the Cripple Cup. But that's because, the Cripple Cup. You know, that's different. <laughs> yeah, your, your goats, they're basically your goats of mm -hmm. the team. Like, literally, the goat is a goat. But that's Cripple Cup. That's different. <laughs> You... Eh, it also works. Hurting is hurting. Either way, next match. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be Le Grand Bleu versus Kepri Do It. Yes, we can! Which and is, is a 1-1 one, one draw, which is a big deal. It's the first non-win for McMackie. Mm -hmm. And McMackie is at the top of the leaderboard. Uh, Le Grand Bleu is, I believe, the team I predicted to take second. Uh, they're definitely the this team. Is why it is, yeah, this is why it's exciting. Mm -hmm. It's like neck on neck right now between those two. Yep. 
Uh, I think they are just behind Pro in the Party right now, but... Uh, no, Pro in the Party is second, and then yeah. we have Kentakiris Cretations from Basunda, mm -hmm. and then it's Le Glant Bleu, okay. because Le Glant Bleu already lost twice. Oh, okay. I could have sworn that they were doing a little bit better than that. Uh... I also think I've played Tessa. Hmm. Today well. in the call with his necromantic while I was playing mm. Nurgle. And I basically was able to win the match, but then Nuffle gave me a skull both mm. down, reroll into skull both down, flip table. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> As it happens. Um, so it looks like Kepri still inflicted a lot of injuries like they usually did, but not quite enough permanent ones, so the elves were. Pro were, I infer, able to just play around them still. They had enough players to do that. Uh, enough fast players, for that matter. And uh, Le Grand Bleu also rolled a plus movement on a catcher. So, you know, they have a one-turner incoming. Yeah, but I don't think they are going to be the ones to be winning this. I'm still thinking it's going to be either Pro in the Party or McMackie's um, Can Really Do It with Steve Ken. Well, I mean... McMackey is going to come in first, I think, but the second place team could still potentially be Legrand Blue, I think. Anyway, last game of the week. Uh, Doom Anvils versus Royal Rumble Boys. Another 1 1 draw. The uh, Royal Rumble Boys, let's look at them. 54 blocks to 59. Uh, the Doom Anvils inflicted five in injuries to the Royal Rumble Boys 2. And they had much better ball possession. I think they might have just, like, hit a roadblock on the... on the Nurgle, because this looks to me like <coughs> the Chaos Dwarves came out ahead. Yeah, Except they that it's missed, a draw. They, they missed they miss next game two people on the mm -hmm. Nurgle team, which is huge. But they also have a massive bench, so it helps them. Uh, yeah, that would that would do a lot for them. Uh, I also know that Doom Anvil rolled doubles on a Chaos Dwarf, so they have a Claw Chorf now. The dream begins. Yeah, it does. <laughs> hmm. Oh no. They have two Claw Chaos Dwarfs. If he would have not taken the strength up, he would have had three. Okay, I, I, that only tells me that taking the strength is like even more justified. Either way, what uh, uh, team are we going to look at? You know what? I'm going to start. Okay. Uh, because I just played the guy, and because I was salty and he was rather cautious, I'm going to give um, Tessa the blessing of looking at his team right now. Le Grand Bleu. You know, the team which has a mm -hmm. wall dancer and a catcher with movement up. The wall dancer still needs two pushes before he can do a one turn touchdown. The catcher basically only needs one. At this point, yeah. if he has enough money, I might be interested in grabbing a tree. And just mm -hmm. trying to get grab because if he can mm -hmm. get grab together with a catcher with nine movement and sprints, doing one turn touchdowns is super yep. simple. On this, on uh, his catcher's next level up, I would recommend taking sidestep as well, for the much the same reason. It just makes that one turning so much easier. Yeah, I think you can even one turn with like four or five persons on the field minimum, which is a good thing to have for what else because. No feeling players, it's not their strong point. Mm hmm. But, uh, yeah, this team is still super developed. It's still it's still a really quick elf team. It, it doesn't surprise me that this team managed to. It didn't actually beat the Kepri, but it doesn't surprise me that it managed to draw against Kepri. Because, like, how do you stop this team from scoring, right? Yeah, I will say that this is a team which has a Nurse Steel catcher, which I still will promote as a amazing kill up for the catcher. Even though the um, Pro Elf catches are in a completely different league and way better, it's still really nice to have mm. Nurse to Steel on your know, like very speedy catches. One of the things I do dislike a little bit about this team is uh, the straight ball on the wall dancer. 
Why? Because actually it's a really good skill early on, but if you are planning to keep this team, if you are planning to go like Division 2, Division mm. 3 or even Division 1 to the higher leagues, then you kind of gotta know that everybody has sure hands. There's no single person who does not own a sure hands ball carrier. I actually disagree. Uh... First of all, it's good right now, and War Dancers have a fairly high attrition rate, so if it dies again, you just don't take it again, uh, and you're still fine. And second of all, even teams with uh, dedicated carriers, which is most of them at higher levels, um, that it's all, doesn't it's all. matter if their ball isn't being held by that one player, because it's usually only one sure hands player. And it often that player, either because they've been removed or because they, they're out of position, often they can't carry the ball the whole way down the field. So sure hands that's is still thing, useful. That's the thing, though. For example, oh, with my camera team, ball, do you rather. think I touch the ball with anybody else except <laughs> for my two Zoras? That's Kepri, though. Like, uh, to put it this way, if, you, if you're playing against another elf team, or most teams, really, but any team that has more than, like, six movement, it's not unusual for them to ha try to cut the ball on a player who isn't their sure hands player t in order to run it into the end zone. And uh, whether or not they end up doing that or not, just having the strip ball makes it so that they don't want to do that. It makes it so that they're less likely to try and r potato the ball down past their defenses thing is though, also with the wall dancer, like, having the movement up makes the other wall dancer pretty much a legend already. One of the things you might want to get on a wall dancer actually early on, next sidestep, is actually fence. If you care about that wall dancer's life, at least. I am going to try to drill this into elf coaches, because in the rebel it doesn't really seem to stick to elf coaches. <laughs> but having fent means you do not get piled on. Unless they have Juggernaut. You don't. Unless Juggernaut, but if you have Sidestep, you can still, like, you know, dance around that. True. Mo usually players it's don't have Juggernaut do you and know, Grab. Do you know how many Juggernaut Blitzes we have in the Devil? Uh, not that many. I can count them on one hand. <laughs> this is how many. Oddly, the thing is, oddly, like, this the... is why Fent right now is an amazing <laughs> skill to just save your place. Oddly, the first one that comes to my mind is actually a Storm Vermin. A Storm Vermin, and I think she died now, but a Witch Elf. Mm-hmm. And, uh... Yeah. Yeah, fair... Okay, fair fair point. I think Juggernaut is really underrated, but you, yeah. A lot... Most people don't have it. <laughs> Yeah, I do know that, like, people say Finn is an end game, no, game, like a last level skill mm -hmm. up. I sort of agree, but that's one of the beauties about a war dancer. A war dancer, like, normally at level 5 or level 6, they should be pretty much complete already, mm -hmm. unless it's like, you know, roll stat ups and doubles non stop. You should be able to get a good war dancer by level 4 or 5, and then you should just smack the Finn on it to defend it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes sense to me. Uh, okay. If you want to know how a hurt Wood Elf team look like, just look up Fenachar in uh, G-Man Division 2. He had a monster elf called Guan Gungeon, mm -hmm. which is like two times move up, catch it, with six agility, mm -hmm. and block. But he didn't get a Fent in time, and now this guy is just crippled into oblivion. Yeah. Niggles, moving busts, you name it. Isn't he still using that player, though? Like, even He's though, still good. Yeah, because like, even, even with all the crap movement. on it, it's still uh, it's still like a plus movement, plus agility catcher. But it's like it's like having a player which is worth 200k for the price of 300k. Oh yeah, no, it definitely has like a lot of extra bloat on it because of all its in injuries. Uh... So that's the issue with it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, for my team, I think I'm going to look at Jazz Poison. Because uh, they're Space Underworld. Space Lion's team. Yeah. I love Underworlds. 
They're, they're pretty great. I sort of fell in love in Underworld for the fact that they are an amazing team in doing what mm -hmm. they do best, which is bowling, shenanigans, passing, and claw pumping. Like, these are all the things I enjoy in Blood Bowl. The only thing they did not own, which I sort of would, you know, if they would have it, I would make this my main team, but I don't have it, is uh, surfing. So, you know, those, like, Skaven throwers mm -hmm. would be, like, Skaven Berserkers or something. Mm -hmm. and, you know, like, Nos Berserkers. I mean... And this team for me would be like it. If you really wanted to, I think you could develop one of the Blitzers into a surfer, but they're almost they're probably better as pure killers. You just want to have those two Blitzers as pure killers, and mm -hmm. you want to have your troll to just have the Mighty Blow Claw combination, so we can level faster. Mm -hmm. Like, you could argue for going piling on on the troll for even more, like, casualty um, I, gameplay. I would recommend it's... Tentacles. Tentacles is way better on the troll mm -hmm. because you first of all can hold people up and it's actually, you know, a lot better to just let your killers do the killing. Mm -hmm. This set, though, it is interesting to go to the piling on Mighty Blow Claw route if you can land a pro mm -hmm. to make your troll a lot more reliable. Then there might be a case of actually this might be interesting, but if you do not have pro by then, not something mm. I'd consider. I'm actually not sure if I would take pro or block on this troll. Uh, normally I would take block on a big guy first, but on the underworld in particular, it's tempting to take pro because it helps you throw goblins. Yeah, and a uh, pro... Well, not pro. A underworld troll actually needs to be very active. Like, they need mm -hmm. to move, they need to hit, mm -hmm. they need to base up, they need to hold people, they need to throw. They need to do a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. So having the pro to just like activate him and like keep him rolling, it's actually really interesting. Uh, yeah, and uh, I mean, you're. I checked by the way, and he did lose both his throwers. One of them has four games, and the other has five. So I, I think he's just not been really scoring with them. He's been giving the ball to other players. Well, um, yeah, he's having very mm -hmm. good linemen and very good um, blitzes. Like I said, mm -hmm. the moment these blitzes actually go with uh, Mighty Low Claw, it's going to be really, really interesting. Mm -hmm. And uh, on that topic, actually, he has, like, five or six players who are very close to leveling up, so his team value is really close to just bloating up a game. A except, well, I say bloat, but it'll be, like, the good kind of bloat, where it's not actually bloaty. Also, like... <laughs> yeah, similar, just for the viewers at home, look... You know, go to the double head stroll, click on it, and just look at the model. Uh, oh, the goblin, right. I heard troll for some reason. No, yeah, the goblin with the two heads. This second head is amazing. <laughs> Looks like it's something out of a bloody cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> it sort of reminds me of Stimpy. Um, it's Stimpy. No, from Ren of Ren and Stimpy. Mm hmm. I, I, I can see it, actually. But yeah, it's it's just like... This whole... Th the whole neck is just so long, it's comical. This is the thing, though. Like, I've been playing with uh, the custom team uh, sort of build-up, and I've been, like, checking out mutations. The Skaven mutations are actually very sad. They're not really interesting. Hmm. Compared to how awesome the goblin mutations are, they sort of drop the ball in Skaven. Mm -hmm. The troll mutations are awesome, though. You should really get horns on your troll. Just because it gets reindeer antlers. <laughs> it's I... like giant antlers on his head. I actually really like the troll tentacle. Actually, the goblin tentacle is really great, too, but it's a goblin, so you probably don't want to take yeah. a tentacle on it. No, but the troll tentacle is massive. It is! Stink. It's like a giant earthworm. <laughs> it's great. Okay, so let's look at uh, this week. Games for this week. Uh, I am going to go with... Let me see, let me see. Uh, well, I'm going to go with Shrek All-Stars versus The Merry Ballers. Ogres versus uh, whoa, Kisla. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, no, no. You're not going to do that. No? Why am I the not going to do that? Are, 
are they not here next week? I thought they were back. Are they? W when are they coming back? I have no idea. Because that coach is still here, as far as I know. Um, like, they just missed a week. Or five. Uh, <laughs> or, oh, wait. No, they weren't there that week either. Uh... They weren't there. That okay. You know what? You're right. No, my bad. <laughs> Damn. This this is an admin game, isn't it? Yep. It's probably going to be an admin game. How did I not realize that until now? I haven't been tracking this either. So, well, I'll just keep that in mind going forward. So, since that one's disqualified, uh, I don't want to do the the goblin game because that'll just be a bloodbath. So, let's look at uh, the Frozen Dead North versus the Grand Blue. It sounds like a very interesting matchup because you have that, like, I think Frozen Dead North... Let's see. Oh no, this is, this is not a killer uh, necromantic team. This is the, like, I have block on everything necromantic yeah. team. But it is his still a necromantic Fowler, team. His Fowler is out, but this is a very fast elf mm -hmm. team, so I will give the edge to the Wood Elves. Uh, I... I agree as well, because as I recall, Frozen Dead North, is a l ha the werewolves are a little underdeveloped. Uh, but they could still make stuff actually claws sort of useless against elves, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, looking at the V value, I would totally bring a chase all to this fight as the um, Frozen Dead North. Uh, yep, because I would love to see that. To be, it's going to be the equalizer as well. Mm -hmm. Chainsaw versus AV7 is just a dream, like everything breaks super easily. Yep, that is a 5 plus. No, a 4. Yeah, 5 plus to break armor against AV7. If that actually comes on the field, it might be smart for like Leglong Blur Coach to actually try to like take it out with a wall dancer and leaping because that thing is going to be a menace. Mm -hmm. I don't know what chainsaw the Necromantic gets, but I thought it was Nobla. Um. I'm pretty sure it is the the hack and slash. Uh, hack and slash is like the worst one because it doesn't have any defenses. Uh, no, he, hack and slash is not he the worst can. one. <laughs> he can regen, which is good. He also has one good skill. Um, side step. Yeah, that's it. He has side step. But hack and slash needs to be um, protected through the bribe. Uh, I mean, at the same time, well, elves can probably block him if they really want to. But that is still risky, because if you don't knock him down, you are going to get chainsawed next turn. Neat. Uh, anyway. I, uh, I am going to look at not throwing the party and not calling the glory because they did not level up their guys. But I am going to look at Doom Anvils versus Grungy Desserts. Uh, yeah, that could definitely be an interesting game. We have two Clawed Wolves and a Strength Four Dwarf facing a Nurgle team, which is trying to get his, like, third reroll and trying to finally mm -hmm. get some damage in with two Mighty Blows and a good Tackle Piece and a Dirty Blade. Mm -hmm. um... So this match in, you know, in any shape or form is going to be a fight, and I mm -hmm. love myself a good fight. Yeah, a good brawl. Uh, I would give the advantage to Doom Anvils. I don't think they will lose this game. But it is definitely possible it will turn into a draw. And uh, it, it, I think it will just be up to how on point their claw is. If they can remove Nurgle, it will be great for them. And if they can't, then uh, it will be a so huge great. slugfest. Yeah, it will be a different kind of great. Not so great for Doom Anvils, but great for everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking about that, Doom Anvils and the Snuggle team are not in the contention for, you know, playoffs. So basically, Le Glon Bleu needs to win this week. And... Mm -hmm. The Camry right now is in the top. As long as McMackey can keep his game like this, he's probably going to take it home. Yeah. And fun fact, because I am also in the race of actually getting mm -hmm. to playoffs right now um, in this season, but I'm... Would say I'm fourth mm -hmm. right now. I need to be third to actually go to the playoffs. So I still need to beat somebody, mm -hmm. which is hard because they're all elves. And actually, uh, okay. either way, oh. if McMackey 
is able to qualify, mm -hmm. he will be the first Cavalry team to qualify in the Rebel to the playoffs. Mm -hmm. That will be really cool. But uh, also, a quick third game to go over, because I think it's really important. Kepri do it versus Cantacaris uh, Cretaceans. Which is the first place team versus the third place team. If Kepri, if McMackey does lose this game, and I think he has the advantage, but if he does lose this game, he he will drop out of first place. And the Lizardsmen will be propelled probably into second. There is one person here which can make or break the game. And that is Paris Basin the Skink. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, okay, so I, I think we're done. Yep. Okay. Uh, I uh, wish you good luck, by mm -hmm. the way, with your game. And uh, go smack some heads. Yep, thanks. Uh, we'll be back next week, hopefully with no dice. But, you know, I guess we'll, we'll see when the time comes. Uh, yeah, and this time we're going to prefer his time schedule right away, so we'll be with him instead of like with me, and I'll just mm. try to fit in. Okay then. Uh, so that was that. Uh, bye. Or not, because I'm going to play my game now, but I'm ending the recording, okay? Bye. <laughs>